And God bless you all. Before you sit down, can you please give thanks to God for the privilege of the family that you can love and you can be loved. It's a good thing. There are people that cannot find love. So if you're beside your spouse, please hold their hands and let's give thanks to the Lord. Father, we are grateful. We do not take your grace for granted. We thank you for the gift of the family. And we ask for more grace to grow together, to glow together, and to continue to be what you intended for us to be as we flow together. Please bless your word in our mouths. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. And everybody will say amen. amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I want to quickly speak to you on the four kinds of marriages. Marriages. In the book of Luke chapter number 8, beginning from verse number 4, Jesus gave a parable about the sower that went out to sow. And while he was sowing, some fell by the wayside. Some fell among thorns. Some Some fell on good ground. And I want us to look at, you know, a swan went out to sow, he sow, some fell by the wayside, it was trampled down, the bot of the air devoured it. Verse 6. Verse 6, it fell on rock, on a rock. It sprang up, it withered. Some fell among thorns. And then some fell on good ground. Every marriage on earth today can belong to one of those four. The first kind of marriage is the marriage by the wayside. A lot of people carry many things on their heads. They carry business. Ministry. In laws. Children. All sorts of things. And their marriage is by the wayside. A good marriage must be nurtured. And it takes time. You must pay attention to your marriage. You cannot wish it. And just claim it. You must be intentional about it. You must work on it. You Put fertilizer. You remove weeds. You nurture it with love. With honor. 
with mutual respect. It's not that the woman is submitting to the man and the man is not submitting. Ephesians 5.21 Submitting one to another. It's you cannot be the lion of the tribe of your family shouting your wife down, treating her as if she's a piece of nonsense and expect that that marriage will prosper. You cannot treat your wife as if she's your house help. And put everything ahead of her. Your mother. Mama wawe, your brother, peneso, your sister, owe, church members, there are pastors that prefer their church members to their wives. And like my husband said yesterday, anybody can leave your ministry to go and find International Jesus is coming, Nigeria, Africa, Rwanda, Christian Center. Akajenda, Agato, Agatangira, Itorero, Muza Mahanga, Java Christo, Vafam Nigeria, Kazamurguan, Itorero. It's only your wife that can stand by you. Wowe, O Mugore, Changomuga, when you're away, you lose a cigar and an hour. So you cannot be treating your wife anyhow. Nagore, Mugore, Kuekumufata, Ukushak. In Exodus chapter 18, Mukuvai, Chuminu Munani, beginning from verse number one. The Bible says that Jethro brought Zipporah, the first pastor's wife, because her husband had sent her back. The first pastor's wife did not witness the miracle of the parting of the Red Sea. Our husband had sent her back. Only God knows why. Hurting women hurt others. There are pastors' wives that are in pain today. They are frustrated. Pastor has plan, he has time for everybody except his family. What about adultery? That your husband is a pastor is enough a challenge for a woman to share your husband with people. Everybody can touch him. Everybody can call daddy, daddy. Daddy, daddy, come and pray. Daddy, 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 come and pray. Daddy, 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 the woman, ha, she can't express the pain that she has. And there are too many pastors, ministers, that don't have mentors that can correct them. Yes, I slept with her. And so, if you're not happy, no, it's my ministry. So, when you have a mentor in your life, it is like the brake of the car. 
any car that does not have a brake system is prone to accidents. Who is your mentor? Who can correct you? Who can your wife report you to? Who do you fear? Don't be a lord to yourself. This thing called the pupils. It can kill. This thing called the pupils. It can kill. There are pastors that will not make heaven. Because they have charisma. But no character. I told my husband some time ago. I said, darling. darling. If you sneeze in church, I will be blessed. If you just come to church and say, <coughs> I will be blessed. Because you live what you preach. Anybody can testify about you. But please let me listen to your wife and your children. Then I can decide if you deserve my respect. Anybody can preach. Anybody can preach. But after that, show me your character. Who can correct you? Many marriages are by the wayside. And there are wives too that have become so cocky. They don't know how to manage the glory. So their husband is nothing to them. They can kneel down to greet everybody. Bishops. Bishops. We thank God for you. Sir. We are grateful. But their husband is nothing. Let's bring balance to our families. Because we are the Bible that the world is reading. Please, can I have four people? I just want to quickly. Can I, have four? I need four people. Any male, female. Thank you. Please. Thank you. Please stay. Stay. Okay. Where's your wife? I'm going to please uh, loan me your husband for a few minutes. <laughs> Darling, loan me to him for a few minutes. Papa, so let's assume that this is my husband. And the four of them are our children. You see us, fantastic couple. Everybody say, God has blessed them. We thank God for them. They have they have two boys and two girls. Oh, great marriage. They are preaching. As these children begin to come, husband stays here, wife stays here. After some time, just like our children now, some are living in America, some are living in Canada, you know. <laughs> After their schooling, they have their masters. Now they have gone. So let's, so let's imagine. Firstborn. Go to Canada. Husband, stay where you are. Husband, just stay where you are. Just stay, don't move. Secondborn. Go to, where do you want to go? 
UK. Australia. Australia. Fourth born. Mm -hmm. Go to America. Fourth born. Where do you want to go? Go to England. UK. Mm -hmm. Now listen, everybody. Husband, stretch your hand. No, no, hurry, come. Oh my God, no, my God, what did you Because over the years, you put the children in between you. Over the years, you put ministry and business in between you. And now you are stretching your hand. Look at the emotional gap. So I'm speaking, I'm shouting. But husband is not hearing. Why are you nagging? What is wrong with you? This marriage is 30 years old. We can divorce. I don't understand you. Mm. Even though we are two in the house. But each of us is lonely. So the husband continues to get busy. More businesses. More breakthroughs. More in ministry. So one girl stands up. Head of intercessors. Daddy, daddy. Daddy, daddy. We thank God for you. We are praying we, for you, daddy. We know that God will help you to carry this cross. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Daddy, daddy. And before you know it, daddy is, daddy is wiping the tears. They first start by praying together. And before you know it, she's helping daddy. She's fulfilling a great ministry. Adultery does not happen overnight. It was not... It was not adultery that finished Samson. It was loneliness. No mentor. To read Proverbs chapter 5 and Proverbs chapter 6 to Samson. Nobody was in his life. As you rise, as you glow, as you grow, and as you flow, please don't be alone. Locate your tribe. Your tribe. Uh, tribe. Na Israel. Israel, one nation. Israel is but twelve tribes. Know your tribe. And stay there. Look for people that will inspire you. People that will encourage you. People that can correct you. People that when you get pregnant, they will not be jealous of you. As a man, as a woman. It will help you. Don't let your children or business be between you. Let, let them surround your table. Surround your table. and wife remain one. When you are offended, discuss it. When you are down, discuss it. You are cheating. If you let your marriage be on the wayside, the birds of the air will eat it. My husband says that some people are not happy that you are happy. If you fail, they will laugh. If you fail, the people that love you will cry. Nurture your marriage. 
rero muzagende mutoze cyangwa mukuze ibyano mukurire hamwe I say, man, don't be so spiritual and your wife is nothing there. Give your wife platforms. No matter what I am today, if my husband did not give me the platform to rehearse, there's no way the world will have hurt me. Be secure enough to let your wife shine. And like he told us yesterday, no marriage is perfect. We misunderstand ourselves. But you see, we settle it and we move on. Marriage by the wayside. What about the marriage on a rock? No, 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 not marriage on the rock, but a rock. Rurikukara. Rock of beauty. Ruri. Beauty. Wakara kugiza. Akara kamafaranga. Jesus is the rock. Yes, nurutari. Your wife may be beautiful today. Umgore wa shaura kwa limizu yumusi. In 15 years time. Hariko mnya katrume ni tano. She's aging. Harimara kura. I'm 60. I'm 60 years old. Fiti mnya kamilongu itanda tu. There was a time I was... 25. There was a time I was 40. The reality is I am 60. So you look at your wife and you say she's ugly. Look at her breasts. When she came to your house, her breasts were good. Were you not the one that solved it? You are your children. <laughs> Grow together. Mukurane. It's the reality. No kuri. So don't let your marriage be based on a rock. There may be beauty, there may not be beauty. As I was talking about commitment yesterday. Number three, the marriage that is among fans. Please, life is a fight. You cannot be quarreling with your spouse every time. When will you pray? There are thorns that want to choke your marriage. There are people that want you to sleep and not wake up. There are people in your church that hate your wife. Do you know that one woman walked up to my husband in his office to propose marriage to my husband? <laughs> Are you handsome? That's what happens. Master said, but madam, you're not married. She said, I know. That you even have four children. Master said, get out. I am got to and he came to tell me. I said, who has a gun? Who has a gun? Where were you when we were laboring together? Now the man is worthy. You want to marry him? Tons. Are you now mahwa? So you must be able to pray together. everything that is Dress it and keep it. The book of Genesis. Dress the garden and keep the garden. And number four. The marriage on good soil. 
We've been married 39 years this year. Tumazimia kama utatuni chenda tukubati. We have labored over the marriage. Tukiwisha kuya kujirango tuvijereho, tujeraho, tujeze. We have cried over the marriage. Kwara rize kumerurusha kutuvuga. We have suffered pains in the marriage. Kwara baba jugwe mururusha ko. We have misunderstood each other. Haribyo tutumvi kanyeho. There are days my husband will face the east, I will face the west. And as a woman, you will not be able to sleep. Even the This is the reality. We have misunderstood each other. There had been times when money was not enough. There had been times when we were wearing fairly used clothes. There had been times when we were trusting the Lord for our children's school fees. There There had been times then that I would say, I would say married. But you see, we kept on fighting. We kept on fighting. We kept on nurturing the marriage. We kept on praying. We kept on investing. If you say because of one little thing, you want to throw the marriage away. Do you know the one you will meet again? Biologically speaking, every woman is the same. It is just packaging. My husband, will, if he sees an outfit, he will buy it. Put it under the car. And while I'm going, he will say, darling, check, pack, pack the car. Check under the seat. Oh, my God. Even today, he woke up this morning and gave me money he said it's valentine's day you are my val this is for you a woman needs to be nurtured as a woman is aging She's feeling that she's not beautiful anymore. She has carried pregnancy. She saw you when you were looking at the usher. She saw you when at KFC you were looking at that beautiful lady. She's feeling, oh, maybe I'm no longer. Oh. Validate your wife. Tell her she's beautiful. Once in a while in church, hold her hands. Squeeze it. Hold her. When I want to preach in church, my husband will introduce me. He will be saying things that I'm happy about. I will pretend that I'm looking for something so that he can say more. <laughs> he will say, let's welcome mama. I say, I'm coming, <laughs> say more. <laughs> Invest in your wife. Honor your husband. Nurture the relationship. One day. The children will be gone. And it is not sex that will sustain you. It is not love that will sustain you. In that stage of your marriage, it is friendship. Who is a friend? Somebody that knows where you stink. And yet is faithful. God bless you. Imani wa humujishi.